Hi, my name is Sean Garfield. This is the Releasing Kings newsletter. It's uh, January 4th, 2015. This week I want to talk to you about prophetic identity. Um, who we are and what we can believe for our future is uh, very much a function of uh, how we see ourselves and how we see God. Um, so understanding our prophetic identity is a pathway or a doorway to uh, entering into all that God has for us. So Jesus is not just a master of servants or the father of sons or even the firstborn of many brothers. He is also the Lord of lords and king of kings. And whether I believe I'm a servant or a son or a brother or a king, somewhere in that pro progression very much impacts my ability to believe God for my destiny. And we all go through a transition from being comfortable as a faithful servant or son who obeys the Holy Spirit, does what he's told, Anything more starts to make us feel nervous. And for good reason, there, I mean, people have fallen off this, both sides of this horse and, and, and really uh, had some major shipwrecks. So it's wise to be, uh, you know, observant. Um, but uh, we also want to be cautious with presumption and we want to honor God, be comfortable with our true identity and possess our land of promise. The, the kingdom is built on a relationship uh, in which God releases personal initiative that's birthed in the desires that he wrote in our hearts. That's the, the real nature of maturity. And it's time for sons to grow up, scary as that may be. <laughs> it's, not, uh, it's not dangerous. In fact, it's uh, very loving. So let's talk about identity. The path of spiritual maturity takes us from servants to sons and brother and then to kings. Who am I? is very much a product of who I believe God is. Our religious tradition has roots in the Old Testament. People at that time needed prophets and priests and kings to hear from God for them under that covenant. There was atonement for sin, there was salvation, but Jesus did not dwell in their hearts and the Holy Spirit was not released in the same sense that it is today. People were prone to, because they couldn't hear from God, to be hard-hearted and rebellious. And Old Covenant leaders were very directive, and the, and the best model of discipleship was servant. So when Jesus arrived on the scene, God with us, Emmanuel, he invited us to transition from servant to friend. Uh, read John 15, 15. And the way God relates to people now is very different. He put the desires of his own heart in our hearts, and he longs for a relationship of initiative where we choose to be part of the kingdom, by choosing the desires in our own hearts that match His. Religion is often still a bastion of seeing God as controlling and directive instead of relational. Religious leaders emulate their concept of God by being authoritative and directive. Religion is an invitation to be something you're not. Christianity at its core is an invitation to be who God created you to be, to be yourself. So, who am I? Let me tell you a little story. Before I became a bivocational pastor, this was from 1990 to 2003, we started two churches. I, I assumed every religious tendency in the church could be attributed to poor leadership. <laughs> and I, was, I intended to do a lot better. What surprised me during my 13 year stint starting uh, those two churches was that many people carry a servant mentality and they want directive leaders. They want someone to tell them what to do. And it's slowly changing as the kingdom grows more and more and people are willing to trust their hearts and, and contend for their mountain and they catch this vision. And our real calling is to bless nations and to change the world by having a loving and proactive environment in every mountain of our culture, education, government, arts, entertainment, business, and family, not just religion. So in one sense, I, I want to help us to sort of stop blaming leaders. Okay, because in a, there, it's, it's a two-way street. People are drawing that sort of uh, reliance out of uh, leaders in the prophetic. So what is our role? We have the privilege of using our prophetic and leadership gifts to help people connect with their kingdom calling. And those gifts operate out of an amazing love for people. And over the last 15 years, I would say that's the most amazing distinctive that I've discovered is how much love is involved in this equation. So let's contrast the old with the new so that we can see the difference between religion and kingdom in both prophetic ministries and leadership ministries. So let's talk about 
the religious prophetic. What does that look and feel like? It discerns sin and the consequences, and it highlights the negative in terms of, um, of rebuke, uh, judgment, accountability, and discipline. The gift can always spotlight the negative, and, and it's consumed by it. Every delay or miss is presumed to be a failure in obeying God, and suffering is always self-inflicted. People submit to shame, manipulation, and control into this ministry because they don't understand their identity. They think they're still servants. So let's talk about kingdom prophetic. These folks can discern all, the, all those same negative things, uh, but they choose to go deeper and find what God has written in that person's heart and connect it to a kingdom purpose. And people feel loved back to life by this ministry, and they choose their own election voluntarily. And oh, by the way, they choose to let go of every hindrance, every sin, everything that entangles them all by themselves once they catch a vision for their own destiny. They become sons and friends and kings in the process. So let's talk about leadership now. Religious leadership uh, emphasizes God's control and, and the inherent sinful nature of men. They are directive and authoritarian because they sincerely believe that sacrifice and obedience is what God wants. They sincerely believe that people are needy, sinful, and have rebellious hearts, and they have to be held accountable. So they are naturally teachers, prophets, or apostles who are informational, but they're not relational. They produce compliant servants who eventually rebel. And uh, that's a sad process to watch. And you would think you could just you know, sort of tell everybody, and that would be the end of it, but it's not the case. It's deeper than that. So let's talk about kingdom leadership. Kingdom leaders realize people are created in God's image and carry his spirit and his heart for the kingdom. His sheep hear his voice. That's the, I think that's the loudest message I learned during my pastoral days. They, these leaders simply connect people with the Father's voice. And they can, these people can already hear the Father's voice. And the desires they have in their hearts are already written there by God. And so... These leaders are more confirmation versus direction. Kingdom leaders train people in the way they should go to reach their own destiny instead of funneling them into some institutional program that represents the leader's vision. These leaders love people, and their goal is to release them into the fullness of what God wrote in their heart. People feel loved, encouraged, empowered, and released. And you would think this would be a big mess uh, organizationally. But ironically, great movements are spawned in this atmosphere of liberty. Uh, they're orchestrated by God himself. That's sort of the plan. <laughs> Jesus came to redeem his people, not to judge him. That's the bottom line. At every turn, we find lost or broken people. And it's the nature of God and godly prophetic people to redeem us from reaping what we've sown. Jesus' ability to resurrect us from our past and breathe life into the desires of our hearts is an amazing experience in his love and in his presence. That's the real role of prophetic ministry. John 3, verse 17, God did not send a son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God did not send you and I prophetically, or from a leadership standpoint, into the world to judge the world, but to save the world. That's why we're here. So let's talk about prophetic application. When I encourage people uh, prophetically, I'm not really trying to predict their future. I'm not even trying to guess their mountain correctly. I'm just trying to ask them to articulate the desire of their heart and help them see if it resonates with the Father's heart. I'm not trying to impose a new direction or a different direction on them. If they or I can simply say what that direction is that God wrote on their heart, and we can both hear it if it's real. And if it is real... We put the candles on the cake and start the party. <laughs> and if it's off in some way, we try again until we both hear the Father, and then we start the party. Um, so the Holy Spirit adds all kinds of confirmations and amazing insights to this approach of love and respect for people. And we're pulling them into their own unique de destiny, which is very powerful, very fruitful, and very exciting. And you know what happens? People love you for doing that. And you fall in love with them when you really understand what God has called them to do. This is so powerful and so exciting. And uh, it's totally changed the way I approach uh, ministry and people 
Um, and the bottom line is love. Amen. Have a great week.